let's then start integrating the router with the NGRX store. For that, let's head over to the terminal and let's install the router store library. So now that the library is installed, let's configure it in our application module file. So one thing to bear in mind is how does the integration between the router and the store works? It's actually very simple, take a look. This is the UI state and let's have a look at the application state. We have here the interface that defines the application state. What the integration between the router and the NGRX store will do is it will add here another top level entry at the level of the application state called router. And under router, the router property, we will have all the information necessary to know in which state the router is in so that we can go back and forth between router states. Actually, let's take the time to add it here. We are going to say that this router is of type router state and you want to take the router state out of the router-store library, not this one, so this one here. So let's have a look at the import. We can see here that we are importing this from router store. Let's have a look. So it basically contains the path of the current route. So this is more or less what one would expect. Now, what should we define here as the initial route? We can do something like this. We can define here the router property and using auto completion, we have here the path. So we can specify here the initial path. Let's say that the initial path is home. So this means that when we load the application, we are going to go automatically to the home route. And this router state here, as one would expect, this needs a reducer as well. We need to configure the reducer in the application module. Let's have a look at the reducers that we already have. So we have here the UI state reducer and the store data reducer. So we need here another reducer for the router property. And for that, we are going to take the router reducer that comes bundled in the NGRX router store module here. So we have here all our reducers configured. Now the only thing that we need is some code that detects router transitions because the router is active, something that detects router transitions and dispatches actions to the store to store the router state. So in order to do that, we are going to add here using the router store module, we are going to call connect router. So this will install a service that will do exactly that, that we just described. Again, router store module comes from the NGRX router store module. So with this in place, we have everything set up. Let's just make sure that we have our server running with npm start. And now let's switch back to the browser. So it's important to make sure that you have the latest version of the dev tools installed. You have here the initial state of the application. Let's reload it. Let's start here in localhost 4200. So as you can see, this is the initial state of the store, but here we have emitted here a new action, which we didn't trigger ourselves. So this is a router action, router update location. And we can see here that the body of the action contains a payload, which contains the path, the target path. So we have just navigated to the root path of our application. Now let's start navigating the application and see what happens here. If we click on about, we have here another update location. If we click to home, we have the chat application displayed. Let's select the user. We have here the chain of actions that we had before already being displayed. So now if we hit back here on the NGRX DevTools, we are going to start going back in time and this includes, we are going to see the router navigating. So as we go back in time, we also transition to the about component or the home component. Let's go back. We are back to the home component. So this is how the integration with the router works. With this demo, we can understand why the integration with the router is so important. Without being able to integrate NGRX store with the router and treat router transitions as actions that are dispatched against the store. Without that, as we would navigate backwards, we would not visualize, for example, the about component or the home component. And so the ability to go back to the previous state 
would really not be that much useful if we cannot at the same time navigate to the other components that were being displayed. By the way, you might have noticed that here the action that gets triggered each 3 seconds was not being shown. This is because for demonstration purposes I have here commented it out in the server notifications effect service. So if you want you can do the same so that you have a simpler log here in the ngrx dev tools. And so this demonstrates the integration with the router. Let's now talk a little bit about immutability and on push change detection. And that will lead us very close to the end of our course. On push change detection is coming right up in the next lesson.